electric motors have been very helpful for performing virtually any task. They are powerful, simple, lightweight, and quiet. The most widely used electric motor is the squirrel cage, named after its rotor shaped as the drum of a squirrel cage. First, we must learn a bit about magnets. If we place two fixed magnets, as shown in this sketch, we will have a magnetic gap, we can call it a stator. And in the middle of it, we may place a rotating magnet, we will call a rotor. With the poles of the magnet as shown, with like poles facing each other, the north pole of the stator will reject the north pole of the rotor and the south pole will reject the rotor's south pole. The result will be that the rotating magnet will rotate a half turn so that the south pole faces north pole and north pole faces south pole. This would be the end of the story if we were to use only permanent magnets, that is, magnets with a fixed polarity. Now, if we use an electromagnet as a stator, an iron bar which requires electric current to become magnetized, we can change this situation. Using a battery connected with the right polarity, we will have, again, the stator magnetized in the same direction as the permanent magnets, so it will reject the rotor, and the rotor will rotate the half turn, so it will end facing north and south and south to north. Let's suppose we rapidly reverse the battery and thus switch the magnetic poles of the stator. We will again have rejection of poles of the rotor and it will rotate another half turn. If we reverse the battery one more time, the rotor will keep rotating as long as we reverse the battery every time the rotor turns. Now, let's replace the battery with a source of alternating current. Alternating current is continuously reversing its flow, just as we did by reversing the battery, but it does this 60 times a second. This means we will have an electric motor that rotates as long as it is connected to the power line. Actually, there are some motors known as synchronous motors which work just this way, using a stator winding and a permanent magnet rotor. However, let's go a step further. Let us replace a permanent magnet used as a rotor by a squirrel cage. A rotor of this kind looks like a drum made of copper or aluminum which has a few bars which act as a short-circuited winding which, when induced by the magnetic field of the stator, produces a strong current which in turn generates a magnetic field of their own whose magnetic field facing north to north and south to south the poles of the stator. And here we go again. The field inducing the rotor repels the rotor so it rotates to align with the polarities of the stator field. But it is right then that the alternating current in the power line reverses itself, such as when we reverse the battery. And the process goes on. We have now an electric motor in action. But hold on. How can the rotor tell which way to start turning? When repelled by the north and south of the stator, it can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. What actually defines the way it will rotate? This is where the starting windings come into play. Additional coils in the stator connected to the power line through a capacitor an electrical component which changes the current phase just enough to push slightly more in one direction than in the other. 
Once the rotor gains speed, a centrifugal switch, depending on speed, switches off the starting winding and the motor keeps turning in the established direction. Since the squirrel cage motor has only one moving part, it has a minimum wear and tear, and its useful life is quite long. I hope this clip has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.